All right, so let's move to, I think we've got early literate. I'll look to staff or you guys for guidance. Go to standards first. We don't have any, is anybody trying to get home that we need to turn to? Chief of Staff Young, am I getting a signal? Budget. budget. Let's do budget then. We Yeah, let's make sure we take care of staff. Anybody on a timeline? Thank you. Let's hit the budget. I'm just doing the early university level. Really, I'm not sure. Some information. So, I'm just doing early university level. Sorry. I have a question. I I can... We'll move in. Okay. okay. So we're going to move to our Okay. Good evening. All right. Uh, yeah. Deputy yeah. Jones. Yeah. Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones. Um, I just texted my kids so they'd get on YouTube. So it looks like a lot more people are listening to this. <laughs> so um, this is your monthly budget report. Um, there's not anything in the backups for, well, that you're used to seeing because we just, July was the first month in the next fiscal year. And our reports have, have a one month lag, right? So since this board meeting is so early in August and July just closed, it will be the September meeting that we start showing you the monthly budget reports. I can attest that um, the Utah State Board of Education is uh, fiscally sound. Uh, July, or I'm sorry, uh, fis the end of state fiscal year 23 and the year end closure processes are ongoing. Uh, they look very good. Deborah's smiling, um, which is always a good sign. So um, I anticipate that in the September meeting, uh, we'll be able to, to um, post the balances for you, the board, to consider. Um, and uh, you'll and demonstrate that uh, once again, uh, we had a successful fiscal year and we're looking forward to uh, an even better and more successful fiscal year, because uh, that's always possible for fiscal year 24. Um, so Chair, I'll pause there to see if there's any questions or concerns with the monthly budget report, and then at your direction, I'll move to the discretionary funds report. I don't see any lights, so let's proceed. Okay, for the discretionary funds report, um, that update to the report will occur in September as well. Uh, as we're anticipating that we will know the carry forward balances. We'll be able to put them in front of you. Uh, one thing that I respectfully request all board members to do between now and uh, our next meeting is to look at the discretionary funds report uh, because it's in the September meeting that we also ask you if you want to continue the projects that are listed uh, within the discretionary funds report or and or uh, come up with ideas for um, additional projects based on the balances. Obviously, you'll have some lead time uh, to know uh, or see um, how much uh, discretionary funds you have um, as a result of your enclosed 23 uh, for carry forward balances. But if you could, you know, we'll remind you, but if you can take a look at those um, and, uh, you know, um, think about whether or not you'd like to see those projects continue, um, we'll provide status, how much we've spent so far. We'll also provide you uh, with what projects were completed or how close we are to completion of them. And, uh, uh, you know, so September is a big lift. Um, we uh, go through all the closure um, data with you and then also ask that you um, help us um, or give us direction on your discretionary funds, uh, you know, as early as possible in the year. And once we know from state finance that our balances are, are accurate and they validated them. Uh, sir, I'll just uh, pause there, see if there's any questions or concerns as related to the discretionary funds report. Any questions, comments, concerns? I see none. Okay, so next item, um, I'll turn it over to uh, our great staff for an in-depth review of the ESSER ARP funds at your direction, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Oh, oh there we go. Good evening, board. My name is Jessica Kerr. I'm your CARES Education Specialist here at the agency. We are going to give you our, um, we give these quarterly. We do do monthly backups where you guys can get the numbers there, but we do present quarterly. So here's our quarterly report. Uh, next slide, please. 
So in this slide, you're going to see an overview of all of our ESSER awards, starting from the very beginning to the, our newer, like our nearest to now, the ARP uh, American Rescue Plan. Next slide, please. So in this one, it gives you a little bit more detail. It gives you the name of the award, the amount awarded, the purpose, the distribution, and how we did that, along with the number of awards and the deadline to use those funds. Next slide, please. This is our ESSER awards in K-12 state reserve requests. So as you can see, we have 90% of the awards going to LEAs, 5% or 0.5% for state administration and 9.5% into our state reserve. Next slide, please. We always like to highlight that 100% of Utah K-12 COVID relief funds are obligated. Um, so that's what we like to highlight for you guys every time. Next slide, please. So we start with our round one, which is CARES. These funds had to be spent by September 30th of 2021. And if you go to the next slide, these are our final numbers for that. So it shows um, our LEAs, our state reserve, our admin and our gear and then how many of those were fully reimbursed on the bottom of there. Next slide, please. We're gonna go into round two, which is our CRISA. So this is SO2 and our gear two. This must be spent by September 30th of 2023. So this year, next slide. In the ESSER 2 key points, we like to highlight that it was awarded in April of 2021. Over 90% of it was distributed to LEAs. Most of the LEAs chose to spend their funds on address, addressing accelerated learning for students, purchasing educational technologies, and implementing summer learning and supplement our after school programs. Next slide. So on this one, you will see right under the amount reimbursed, the July 25th date, that is the date that we pulled these numbers so that we could have them in for board backup. Um, so as of that date with our SO2, we were up to 88% of the, that reimbursed. Our ESSER 2 base, our 10% base up to 85, and our GEAR 2 is up to 80% reimbursed as well. Next slide. So additional funds and federal awards from the CRISA Act, we have GEAR 2, which is the 11, 000, 11 million in awarded to LEAs to serve Utahs, and then a million was uh, awarded by the governor's office to the University of Utah Reading Clinic. And then we also have our EANS, Emergency Assistance for Non-Public School. USVE is serving as the fiscal agent and awarded 22 schools with around $16 million in equitable services. Next slide, please. Round three and our most recent, it was what I was trying to say earlier, is um, round three, our ARP, our American Rescue Plan. These funds need to be spent by next September, so September 30th of 2024. Next slide, please. So this is how we, we've broken it down for you. So the American Rescue Plan, we were awarded $615 million for Utah K-12, and this is how we've kind of had that broken up, 90% to the LEA, 5% to accelerated learning, and you guys can see going on from there. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are just some of our plan highlights. In the American Rescue Plan, 20% uh, had to be allotted for uh, accelerated learning, and we like to highlight that currently our LEAs are spending 36% towards accelerated learning, which is over the federal requirement of 20%. Additional funding has been spent on purchasing technologies for student capital improvements, including HVAC, uh, student and community mental health services as well. Next slide. Again, we like to highlight that date of when these numbers were pulled, uh, so July 25th of this year, just to make sure we had that in for board backup. Uh, so with our ARP ESSER 90%, we are up to 45% reimbursed. With our 10% base on that American Rescue Plan, we are uh, to 48% reimbursed. And with our summer and after school, we're up to 21 and 32%. Next slide, please. Additional federal awards from the ARP Act. We had ARP EANS or EANS II. Um, USBE is serving as the fiscal agent of that award for the Department of Education. Um, the non-public schools must meet or exceed 24% of total students in the school for households with low socioeconomic statuses. USBE may not use ARP funds to reimburse any non-public school as authorized by the section in the CRISA Act. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And this is just kind of a planned breakdown of categories. So it kind of shows you educational technology, addressing pandemic effects on student learning, cleaning supplies, services, et cetera. Next slide, please. 
Um, on this report, we have a little bit different. So we have been working on our federal reporting tool for these uh, funds. So here is just kind of a timeline of when these were released. So the US, uh, USBE tr uh, translated reporting requirements into the survey tool. And then we released that tool to the LEAs on March 1st of 2023. They needed to complete that by April 7th. ARPS reporting was due to the Department of Education by May 4th. USBE had that submitted on May 3rd. Our gear reporting was due on June 22nd. We had that one due on, or we had that one turned in June 25th. And then our EAMS reporting was due June 29th and we had that in June 27th. On the next slide, um, this is kind of, kind of an overview of that in a little bit more explanation. So Sarah Harwood, our grants compliance officer took the question sent to us from the Department of Education and built a Qualtrics survey to send out to our LEAs. Uh, I, Jessica Kerr, then sent that Qualtrics survey out to our LEAs and our team then took the responses and compiled the data for the reporting tool. Uh, the compiled data was then inputted into the federal reporting tool and a brief example of time and effort for put into this federal reporting tool to ensure accuracy and transparency, the agency's care team spent a total of 47 days collectively across the three reports, just making sure that they were accurate and transparent. Uh, next slide, please. These are examples of some of the questions we've asked our LEAs. How did the LEA spend the ESSER gear funds in current reporting period? Um, did the, I'm just gonna jump on certain questions since we're on time, but provide the number of FTE staff. Um, and these were submitted to your board backup. So these are just kind of some of the questions that we have been asking our LEAs. And after that, I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Any lights? Member, sorry. Thanks. Member Wood. I will now. So you shared that it was a total of 47 working days collectively to do all of this work. Do you feel that the 5% administration that they've sent left you, has that been sufficient to compensate properly for the time that it's taking to, to administer? Would you, would you say yes? I, I would say yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna give a more detailed answer. <laughs> no, that, that was just my question. So thank yeah, you. our team worked really hard on that one. I'll just add that we've been able to hire um, Jessica Care, our specialist, as well as we have an administrative secretary. So there is a team uh, for this it's purpose. Very focused on that. Yes. Well, thank you for your yep. work. Sorry, that was. Any other comments or questions? I we we were talking about some of the information. It's amazing how much, and this goes back to when Sarah Young was our ESSER updater. Just the flow that you've managed, so always impressive. And we just want to thank you each time you come in front of us. Any other questions or comments? Um, okay, well I think that does it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your effort. Okay, let's see. On to, I think, standards and assessment then, right? Yes. <laughs>